Alright guys, welcome to another beer review. Bit of a special one uh, today and the, the first vibration. Uh, the first big um, beer that I've opened on uh, the new year. It's actually January 1st, 2020. Um, I actually didn't go too heavy um, last night. It was a quiet one, to be honest. It's just why, why go to that expense of going out and just getting really fucking annoyed by people? So it's been a quiet one family. I had a few beers. Didn't really have anything that special, to be honest. Um, although I did uh, pop open my last bottle of uh, Yellow Belly, which uh, it was all right, yeah. Um, I don't think uh, age has been kind to it, though. But anyway, I digress. Today, we're opening a beer that I've had for a little while now, and it came from uh, one of the first Mickle Beer Club boxes that I that I got. And this is a bottle of the Erdegerza. And I've not said that right, uh, which is collaboration between Mikola and Brewery Boon, or Bon, I'm not sure which how, how it's properly pronounced. So a collaboration brew blended from white thermo foders. Um, one pint, 9.4 fluid ounces. This is clocking in at a modest 6.6% ABV. So, Mikola Erdegers Boon Lambic is a modern take on Lambic in our newest collaboration between Boon and Mikola, blending Lambic aged in oak furders previously used for white thermo. This characteristic what um, blend consists of mostly two-year-old Lambic blended with some one-year-old for bottle conditioning with a touch of three-year-old gozer for an aperitif or with uh, yeah I've, I've read that completely wrong i think i invented uh, most of what i read there but um yes yeah, so we're actually having our sort of like new year's day meal um nothing extravagant um i've done a peanut butter well peanut chicken satay curry and uh, we've done a hot pot and we're going to do bits and bobs and just leave me alone people i don't know how how that actually how well, you hear that when I get a, sort of like a, a message um, notification on the phone. Um, I should always put myself in like airplane mode or actually buy a camera. I do have a DSLR, but my eyes are so bad when I'm looking through the viewfinder, it looks in focus. Uh, but when I actually look, watch video back, it's soft focus, but adds a sort of like 60s, 70s aesthetic to the review. And uh, yeah, I look like absolute wank today because... Uh, the way my hair's been cut, every time I fall asleep, it just goes like this. Doesn't matter how much product I put in there. But um, anyway, and uh, camera angle could be a little bit better. But who cares? Who cares, man? So yeah, this came from the Mikla Beer Club box, uh, which still waiting for today. Um, the the med latest box. Um, the Mikla Beer Mail video got released, but not the Mikla Beer Club box video. Hopefully. I'll be able to watch that today. But um, yeah, I've talked about the Mikola Beer Club a hell of a lot. Whenever you see Mikola related beer, chances are it's come from that box. Um, and I just wanted to sort of reflect before I get into this. Um, I've had some absolutely stonking beers um, from the, the club. And uh, I thought I'd only be doing it for like a few months and then just move on. Um, but now I'm, I think I'm like committed to a to go with i think i've like had one box in the sort of like lifespan of the subscription that i've been part of where i've been like yeah i wasn't wasn't a fan of that box i did not get my money's worth you get your money's worth but taste preferences don't get accounted for because it's uh they're handpicked by you know someone else so of course i'm sure there'll be stuff where we've got overstock and this we'll put it in um sometimes it does frustrate me that the mickler beer mail gets um some unique beers that the beer club doesn't get and then you'll get some really sort of oh this is just like everyday beer in the Mikolakul box but I suppose we've got to keep a fair balance to keep it interested um, but yeah it's a wonderful curation I would say and um, yeah I'm yet to be really disappointed so anyway let's get this opened and see what we get that was a I did not expect that cork to out so quickly then um, another one for the collection is there any artwork on it no that could go in the bin um i do have a stopper though so it's not i'm the only one who's going to be drinking this today oh well woe is me so but yeah this is a toast to uh 
my fellow Nicola Beer Club members. Um, I'm not as involved in the community as I probably should be. Um, but it, it's always good because I know uh, Matt Barker uh, who comments a lot as part of it. So that communication I do really, really appreciate. So yeah, 750ml bottle. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, to all you lovely ladies and gentlemen who are part of the Nicola Beer Club or the Nicola Beer Mail. So beer in a glass then, and it's got a little bit of a slight haze to it. Um, sort of a goldeny yellow colour, because gold is yellow. Um, yeah, it's almost got like uh, the look of uh, Iron Brew. Um, if you know what that is, um, without well, actually, Iron Brew is a little bit more orange. Is that I talked out my ass then? But um, yeah, nice gentle carbonation. One thing is worth of a white soapy head. I'm not sure how old this actual bottle is. Uh, whether it's like two to three years, then they put it in and that sort of stuff. Uh, but I've seen this bottle floating around um, in like brew dog bars and stuff for like thirty between thirty and forty quid. So you know. You do get value for money um, a lot of the time. Some really rare beers and exclusives and stuff like that. But I'm not going to shill the beer club anymore. But the referral link is down below if you want to get involved. That's all I'm going to say. Plus you get some nice swag like this all of a sudden. Or all of a sudden, every now and then. Um, I broke my cup that I got. And I broke the beautiful sort of wine uh, stemmed glass. Well, I didn't break it. Somebody else did. But um, yeah, it looks like you'd expect a, a lambic to look like. So let's see what we get in the nose. Oh, got a great musk. There's definitely a woodiness there. A little bit of white pepper. Coriander. Slight rocket leaf. There's like a slight fermented sweet fruitness there. It's got a very subtle hint of funk. It's not too funk. No real sort of like acidity on the nose. But it smells nice. It smells heavier than a 6.6% .6 beer. We're off to a good start. So uh, let's see what it tastes like. Cheers, guys. That's nice. There's a little bit more tartness, a little bit more funkiness, a little bit more acidity on the flavour. But not over overridingly so. Um, I'm getting a sort of like a, a white wine character coming through, which I'm not the biggest fan of. Um, there is a little bit of a, a woodiness there as well. It's like prickly, spicy tones. Um... It's not as sweet as I was uh, expecting from the nose. But then again, a lot of time when I drink Lambics, they're fruited Lambics. Do you know what I mean? So I wasn't expecting that, but I was still expecting maybe a little bit more of a fruitiness. But you're getting like little bits of like pear, apple, that sort of thing. Like apple crumble almost. It's a very subtle biscuitiness to it. I think I'm going to struggle to drink this whole bottle in one sitting. So thankfully I can uh, pop something on top. Um, and maybe I could even do like a sort of a, a white wine sauce with this. Um, am I technically probably wasting this by uh, just doing a review on my own? Probably. Um, this is, you know, classic bottle share sort of beer. But... Um, yeah. Just got like the aftertaste. Do you know when you have um, like hand cooked like kettle chips or crisps? Don't say chips, you're British. Kettle crisps. And you get like the, the aftertaste of oil. You get that sort of like olive oil character. But it's just on the back end. There's, like, you sometimes get flavours when you breathe. What the hell am I talking about? Yeah, I mean, it's not 100% my cup of tea. Um, I'm sure there'll be people drinking this who actually know what they're talking about with these sorts of styles. This is still, you know, fairly new territory for me. 
Um, a lot of these beers, as I said, I drink with more of like a sort of like a fruited element just to I find them a bit more satisfying. Um, although 2020 is going to be the year that I'm really going to give, you know, Belgian style beers and things like that a bit more of a chance, a bit more of exposure on the channel. Um, look out for a few reviews that I've already recorded. But yeah, it's like this, this, I would not have bought this beer. Let's just put it out there. Uh, and not just because of price point, just because I'm not really that big of a fan of these sorts of beers. It's not for me. So please, please, please take my opinion on this beer with a grain of salt. Or maybe a, a half a t t tablespoon, geez, half a teaspoon. There we go. That's a nice metaphor. Um... Yeah, bottle share beer, not to be enjoyed the way I'm doing, uh, but I'll have a couple of glasses of this with my food, um, and then as a sort of like end of the evening sort of thing, so I'll probably end up drinking the whole bottle. Um, although I am in work tomorrow, and I do want to have a few beers, so I might, with the stopper on, I think I can leave it for a couple of days and just drink it here and there. But... Um, yeah, there's, there's no harshness, there's no really offensive characters, it's just not my thing. Um, and I've got another collaboration between these two in there, so I think I'm definitely going to be saving that for a potential bottle show in the future, just so it doesn't go to waste. Um, and people with much more experience and uh, better palates can appreciate it more. Um, so if you like these sorts of beers, see I'm not even in a position where I can say this is a fantastic example of this style of beer because it's still fairly uncharted territory for me. But as a beer, I'm going to review this on just purely um, like enjoyment factor alone, not comparing it to other beers because that would be unfair with my point of reference. Um, and I'm going to give this one 6.75 out of 10. Uh, it's just underneath that 7 out of 10 threshold where I'd be like, yeah, I'd pick up another bottle. Um, if I was at a share and somebody had this, I'd be more than happy to try it, of course. Would I want to buy a bottle of it? I don't think so, because it's just not for me at the end of the day. But you might really, really enjoy it, or you might absolutely hate it. That's the, the beauty of uh, what we do here on YouTube. When we look at being life in general. What's good for me might not be good for you. What's good for you might be awful for me. And that's... If it wasn't like that, life would be pretty damn boring. But, um, yeah. It's it's alright. It's alright. It's just slightly wasted on me. There. I'll put it that way. So, yeah, if you've tried this one, uh, then let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. I'm not sure if this is, like, um, there are any other iterations of this one i'm sure it's throughout the years they've done blends like this before um in this like specific sort of recipe well mind you the nature of the the beer style let's put this cork in the bin give my brain a couple of seconds to reset before i open my mouth again um yeah so go check out um, both mikla and buttery boon um, links will be down below and as I said if you're interested um, in joining the uh, Mikula Beer Club family then I think there are uh, some spots open referral link is down below uh, because you get a really wide range of beers and uh, variety is the spice of life as they say anyway thanks for watching if you've tried it let me know your thoughts opinions down below are you a fan of these sorts of beers what ones would you like me to, to review in the future and um, yeah cheers for watching and uh, you all take care Ciao for now, ladies and gentlemen.